Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this short video we're going to talk about rational rapid development enabled by the curriculum architecture design process of the PAC processes for training and development, learning, and knowledge management. Whether your term for this is curriculum architecture design, development architecture design, instructional architecture design, or learning architecture design, the intent is to lead to rational rapid development. The PAC processes for training and development includes three levels of instructional systems design. Curriculum architecture design, modular curriculum development, and instructional activity development. All three levels of design are enabled by a PAC analysis methodology set that focuses on the target audience or audiences, the performance requirements, the enabling knowledge and skills, and the existing content that might exist that can either be used as is or after modification or is not appropriate for this effort. All of this is planned and managed via a common set of planning and management tools and techniques. Let's talk about curriculum architecture design. All of this leads to performance competence, which we define in the PAC processes as the ability to perform tasks, to produce outputs, to stakeholder requirements. Curriculum architecture design is a four-phase process. One of the key outputs produced is a training and development path, or a learning path, or a development path, or a development roadmap. It's been known by various names over the years, going back to 1982 when I did my first project. A performance-based development path includes both formal and informal instruction and learning. In this particular path, there were also qualification and certification testing that happened to certify performance competence of the target audience. This path identifies a suggested participation, mandatory, highly recommended, or elective, in a suggested sequence, and also identifies the current state gaps, total gaps, and partial gaps. The four phases of a curriculum architecture design project lead to implementation planning of follow-on MCD efforts, modular curriculum development, the addy like level of the PAC processes. Here are the six phases of an MCD effort. However, analysis and design is often combined post CAD, but MCD efforts don't necessarily need to have a curriculum architecture design preceding them. If they do, the analysis and design data from the curriculum architecture design effort are often enough to enable a quick review, approval, embellishment of that analysis and design data to get ready for development and acquisition of pilot test materials. Often, pilot testing isn't necessary. It depends on the risks and rewards of the content and its accuracy, completeness, and appropriateness. The goal, of course, of a curriculum architecture design is to lead to rational rapid development, avoiding overlaps and gaps in the content to be produced, and developing acquiring content for future reuse at lower costs and cycle times. The PAC processes is not only all about performance, it's all about content reuse as appropriate, as is or after modification. In 1999, I finally published my book, Lean ISD. I got wonderful quotes from Gary Rumler and Mickey Lane. In 2002, Lean ISD was a recipient of an ISPI Award of Excellence in Instructional Communications. 
Lean ISD was updated and reconfigured, along with several other of my books, various articles, and columns into a packed six-pack, which includes these three books, Analysis of Performance Competence Requirements for the Analysts, Performance-Based Curriculum Architecture Design for the Project Managers and Designers in a Curriculum Architecture Design Effort, and Performance-Based Modular Curriculum Development again for the project managers and the designers of a modular curriculum design. The design of modular events at three levels. Event, lesson, and instructional activity. The other three books of the PACT six-pack include the Curriculum Manager's Handbook, intended to help managers of instructional design organizations Another book is the Management Areas of Performance Competence. This book is intended to help analysts and designers when tackling management and leadership curricula. The sixth book of the six pack is From Training to Performance Improvement Consulting. For those organizations that wish to transition from training to performance based training and then on to performance improvement consulting. It's not about learning. It's still all about performance competence, the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements. Whether that ability is of the individual performers, of the process itself, of the entire organization, and to meet the stakeholder requirements for both process and outputs. Many times, the inability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements is not due to the individual's knowledge and skills. It could be because the organization and job is designed ineffectively. It could be because the staffing and succession systems are not aligned properly. Or the recruiting and selection systems, the training and development systems, performance appraisal and management, compensation and benefits, rewards and recognition. These are traditionally human resources type organizations and processes and have a major impact on the humans that are involved in process performance. But there's other factors. Information and data, materials and supplies, tools and equipment, the financial systems, facilities and grounds, and the culture and consequence systems also impact process performance. Understanding these and how to affect these and align these to the needs of the processes are what From Training to Performance Improvement Consulting is all about. I have both informal development means and formal development means to help one develop themselves in the PAC processes and moving towards Performance Improvement Consulting. These include articles. I have dozens and dozens of articles on my website to help one learn and then master the PAC processes. I have a series of audio podcasts. I have many books and book chapters on my website and various columns from Proven Magazine and Business Process Trends, as well as ISPI's Performance Express. Many presentations are on my website for you to download. I also have dozens and dozens, over 80 video podcasts that one can use to begin to learn about and then master the techniques and tools of PAC. One might also self-certify using tools that I provide. Formal development is via my coaching sessions and workshops and I even provide certification of performance competence of PAC practitioners, the analysts, the CAD designers, the MCD designers, lead developers, and PACT project planners and managers. It's all about PACT, performance-based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder driven training and development of any blend. I have been developing the staff of my clients going back to 1983. 
My client list includes over 60 firms and over 45 Fortune 500 firms. I've been publishing and presenting on curriculum architecture design, the modular curriculum development methodologies, processes of an instructional systems design organization, and many other aspects of performance improvement since the early 80s. I can help you get from training to performance improvement consulting. Let's improve performance together.